Each of the nearly 3,000 people who died on 9-11 has their own story. They were mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters. 20 years later, their families still mourn, including a Hawaii woman who lost her husband inside the World Trade Center. Jen Boniza has her story. It's been 20 years, but Elizabeth Jordan remembers the events of 9-11 like it was yesterday. I can picture, yes, everything about it, the, the feeling of frenzy. And so I write about it often as like it's the throat tightening, the body closing in, and your body just starts going there. The trauma still palpable decades later. It's the day she lost the love of her life. Her husband, 34-year-old Rob Jordan. Rob was born in New York City, but his family is from Oahu, so he spent a lot of time in the islands. He and Elizabeth met at UC Berkeley. The pair exchanged phone numbers in May 1991 and were married in August the following year. In September 2001, they were living in New York. He was working as a bond broker for Cantor Fitzgerald at the World Trade Center. On that fateful day, Elizabeth says he wasn't even supposed to be there. His father was having his throat surgery for his cancer at Yale New Haven, and we were supposed to go to the surgery. And his stepmom made a change at the last minute and said, come after, after work. So he headed off to work that Tuesday morning. Elizabeth was teaching the fifth grade at a nearby school. Just before 9 a.m., she was called out of class. They brought me down to the office, into the principal's office, and showed me the TV monitor that was above the desk. And, and they said, is that where Rob works? And I said, it is, and, and that's his tower. American Airlines Flight 11 hit the 86th floor of the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. Rob's office was located just above that. The next two weeks were filled with confusion. She searched for Rob like thousands of others, clinging to hope. I left his car at the train station for months, and the police would periodically knock on my door. You know, Miss Jordan, do you want to move the car from the train station? I said, oh, no, no, he's, he's going to drive it home. But he never did. Rob and 657 of his co-workers were killed that day. They had taken their computers, and they had thrown them through the windows so they could breathe. They were saying um, all the fire doors were locked. So they were saying we're trapped on the floor. We can't get off the floor. There's tons of smoke. You know, they couldn't breathe. They were all suffocating. And so a lot of them went out the window. And I'm pretty sure that's what he did. Days turned into months, months to years. She waited. I just remember lots of confusion and just hoping that he would be found was really the truth of it for a long time. And I didn't get any remains until uh, about 2003. That gave her some closure. She still wears the lay from a paddle out ceremony held for Rob. Not everyone was as lucky. One of my friends still thinks that her husband's, you know, like maybe in the Bahamas or it's um. I think when it's such a tragic event and so much trauma that you, it just gets very confusing. The trauma she suffered from 9-11 kept her from returning to the classroom. She admits she was angry for a very long time, but honoring his memory and creating a legacy in his name has helped her heal. A scholarship fund was created at Rob's boarding school and Orange Coast College purchased a rowing boat in his honor. The one thing 9-11 taught her Never take anything for granted. Be kind and be loving and, and tell the people that you love that you love them because, you know, they may just not come home. Jen Boniza, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii.